Well, as you know, a lot of the casino holds all the cards, and you know nobody's bigger than the casino by themselves, especially not even Donald Trump. Um, what's coming up, I think, and I, you know I've been looking at some of the other videos of what some of the other people are saying, and a lot of times they're clickbaiters and stuff, fear mongers. I'm trying not to be a fear monger. I do delve into some other serious subjects, but I consider that more like. Um, you know, being a muckraker in a, in a true sense, that are not nothing to do with silver. But um, let me put it to you this way: they're going to break. They're, what they're going to do is they're going to break the markets, the stock market. The stock markets are being held up right now by a bunch of trading algorithms, tra robots trading with each other. The P/E ratios are so far skewed right now; it's ready for a readjustment. And who better to be holding the bag when it readjusts than? Mr. Trump, who promised us make America great again, so you'll see all this capital disappear, and the newspapers will say it was all his fault because the newspapers are full of crap and are run by the powers of the behind the scenes. And like I said, the casino is really holding the cards. So Trump is sort of like the wild horse, or in this case, the wild elephant. Right? He's playing a game. He's in there with everybody else in Washington D.C., but. He's like this elephant over here playing at the at the table that, you know, he's got to knock all these guys out around him pretty much. He doesn't have too many loyal people around him. Um, boy, I would hate to be in Washington, D.C., but I would be loyal to him. I, you know what's kind of weird? Um, I never worked for somebody as wealthy as that guy, but I worked for some wealthy people as their main accountant. And the only type of people I really appreciated that were really wealthy, um, they were in construction because at least they built something. You know, I don't like people that just are wealthy because they know how to manipulate the markets and they got inside information and stuff. I hate that kind of shit. But um, yeah. Anyway, um, that's I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to be in Washington D.C. I can tell you that right now. But. Uh, you know, he almost reminds me of somebody, people I've worked for before. He's, he almost reminds me of that. Now that I really kind of got to know him a little bit better by watching not just what he was saying politically, but watching some of his testimony, some New York commissioners or commissioners or whatever it is about New York construction, I realized this guy is he's kind of like, he reminds me of some of the people I work for. I did work for some really big construction park projects down in the state of Florida, but you know, as we're waiting for what you know what's going to happen with silver, um, I decided to dump some of the palladium. You know, partly because I want to get some land, and I was going to use other money to get that. And I says, let me just dump some of this palladium because I think it's going to go down, um, not overall, but because I think well. We all know that palladium is 90-something percent industrial, so if the markets come down, which I'm thinking that's going to happen, palladium is going to come down. But eventually, it's going to go, it's going to be the biggest gains of all the precious metals going because of tensions with Russia. And since we have 43% of all palladium coming from Russia, it's particularly one mine, which is 39% of the world's um, uh, palladium supply coming from Norilsk Mine in northern Siberia, well... It's it's a given that it's going to go way to hell up because I think we will have more and more tensions with Russia. Unfortunately, but you know, it'll make you wealthier if you know if you you hold in palladium. Now, the thing is, you got to really when you're holding metals, you got to be kind of like these two chicks over here walking down the street. You just got to be nonchalant about it, um, and not really advertise it, of course. And the other thing is. Just be patient because, you know, if you were expecting the stuff to go up in 2012, which I did, I thought it was going to go up in 2012 because there was a, there actually was a very, very close to, it was very close to actually being a real happening whereby uh, there was going to be an attack on Iran, on our nuclear facilities, it didn't happen, and an all out war, or war. Uh, but it didn't happen. The uh, Mossad pulled back. Netanyahu and it didn't happen all this kind of crap and that would have really pushed up gold prices silver prices and oil prices but that did not happen um, very close to happening and there's been a lot of close calls but you got to really kind of like with these metals 
they're one of the most, like I said before, they're one of the most high risk and possibly high ward investments going. But the deal is, I'm going to talk about something else here too, because some of these people are talking about confiscation of metals. There's not going to be confiscation of metals. What there's going to be is confiscation of profit from when you go to change it in. And what I think is going to happen, um, like right now, like Palladium took major gains from the time I got it, but let me put it to you this way. I think it's going to have more major gains, but I think it's going to come down if the markets come down this year and then go back up again. So I'll rebuy it. But what I think is going to happen is um, it's not going to be a confiscation of the actual metal, but since, you know, the government... See, all you have to do is make laws to make to all the dealers and brokers and coin dealer, coin dealers comply with regulations on reporting sales of anything they do. Like there's a certain amount of ounces for silver, gold, platinum, and palladium, and they do this, and, and there's, there's, there's different parameters. But they can make it whereby even if you sold anything, it has to be reported and they can have a special tax on it. That would be how the wealth would be confiscated, not a physical going door to door, give me your gold or some shit like that. They're not going to be doing that kind of crap, okay? But I think when the, 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 the well, I notice when the precious metals are going to be sky high, the price of fuel is going to be sky high. So one of your modes of transportation might be one of these flower power scooters like old girl is on, because gasoline, uh, I think it will go well north of five dollars a gallon at that time, probably eight to ten, and people are, are going to be really hurting in their net disposable income, which is already effect. Already, retail sales in the United States have been sucking for the last several years. It's amazing how they're keeping the markets up. Whereby, you know, it's almost like this lady sitting in his car with the 180 degree turned seat. It's like you're looking, they're giving you a view of the economy that's not reality. You know, it's like they turned it around 180 degrees. Before, we had the, um, you know, 2008, 2009 crunch, right? You know, where, where the housing market came down. The real bright spot in the economy after that was the shale oil industry that was going on in South Dakota and all that, right? You know, the Bakken oil reserves and all that. Well, that was the main non-farm payrolls where people were mainly employed in those industries, in the oil in the industries up there. And that was shoring up all the figures on not just the labor force, but also the GDP and all that. Then they played the game with trying to bust Russia, which was to bring down the oil prices. That's why they really brought them down. It wasn't over the shale oil industry with with uh, Saudi. Um, and what happened was all these non-farm payroll figures that were shoring up the numbers that were within the shale oil industry, all that money, all that disappeared. And guess what? It's The numbers are still rosy. They're fake. They're fake numbers. Um, there's a lot of people aren't, you know, I guess there's like MBA engineers out there and stockbrokers probably working in Home Depot or some crap like that, you know. Uh, I don't know, not doing the same type of thing they were. Maybe people out there with chemical engineering degrees working as a waiter in a restaurant. So the reflection in the economy, it, it's, it's a ruse. It's a ruse. Just like, you know... They're painting a rosy picture as much as possible. You know, the wealthy are getting more wealthy, obviously, because usually when everybody else gets less wealthy, there's always a few getting more wealthy. Um, but uh, they're giving you every, you know, they're giving you a reflection back to you, what you want to see. Like old girl here is looking in the uh, at her reflection in a Rolls Royce. She wants to see what she wants to see because I'm mean, but you know, that's exactly what they're giving to the public. They're giving them a nice rosy picture. Ha ha, here it is. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Actually, what I think is going to happen is this is one of the re other reasons I think I'm going to get out of Florida eventually because 
This is retiree country to the max. I was in retiree country in my area when I first got down here, but now it's got all over the place. But um, I think where they're going to really hammer the crap out of the um, the middle class wealth is with the retirees' pensions. Because when they bring down the markets... Um, a lot of pension money is invested in the stock markets and a lot of money from industries that aren't even related to you know the general equities are invested in there too you can have money from I mean back even back when they had the housing boom going on there was pension money being invested in the housing boom and guess what happened with that oh, those pensions got upside down pretty quick because the housing bu bubble broke and that's you know so right now there's a lot of money being invested for retiree money that's invested in the general equities it's like a house of cards man i think the general equities are going to come down i mean it's been said for quite some time but when they do it's going to affect retiree money and i i can't see what boy i don't know what would happen in this state in Florida, because this place is like retiree, it's a retiree capital of the freaking United States. And I actually tell people you shouldn't retire down here because you can't trust the medical crooks. But, um, you know, we might just sometime, well, what might happen is we might just go back to an age of normalcy eventually, but there's going to be some hard times. An age of normalcy is like when you got back on the, uh, you know, the Pacific Southwest Airlines, the chicks all wore mini skirts and they're blonde and they're hot. Um, you know, today they don't do that, you know. <laughs> they, look, they wear the Hillary Clinton-approved pantsuits. But uh, the deal is when you have, you know, real laissez-faire competition and entrepreneurship, lack of government regulation, which I know Donald Trump is trying to do, but I don't know how successful he's going to have to be. It's like the NSA needs to go away, but I don't know how he's going to do that. He's one guy. I mean, I can help him get, make him go away. <laughs> I'd be glad to do that. I should have said that, but, you know, that's what you got to say, right? But anyway, um, as far as what's coming up, I think there's going to be a major, 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 major reset in the markets itself. But there's not going to be like this catastrophic failure of the dollar all at once. Um, but we're going to have a lot of disappearance of a lot of capital and wealth. And when that happens, it's going to slow down the economy across the board. And it's also going to put a lot of um, net carried forward losses on people's personal income statements, which means there's going to be a lot less tax money coming in. Because really what funds the, the government, it's like ridiculous. It's The cash flow, I think, is mainly coming from tax revenue. But... The government itself is being funded by the sale of U.S. Treasury bonds, right? And that's where you have, you know, the government's in debt and debt and debt and debt. But actually what's, I think, on the cash flow is the, um, you know, it's coming from the actual taxes. Well, if you have a reset in equities, there's going to be... You know, and that's assuming when you have this happen, what always happens is <clears throat> to bring down the price means there's got to be a lot of sales. It doesn't, you know, if nobody sells, the price stays the same, right? There's always sales. So there's going to be a lot of recognition of losses on people's books, and which means there's going to be a lot of net carried forward operating loss, um, which will go from the, even from this year to the next year whereby people can carry forward these losses and not have to pay into the government legitimately taxes because they had huge losses in the markets. Well, that's not going to help the cash flow. Now, I guess maybe they can create the money out of thin air, but, you know, they really can't because a lot of times what have actually happened in, uh, I think it was 2009, September 28th, they had an electronic run on the money markets and it almost caused a systemic failure of the banking system for a week or so which would have been like devastating to the confidence of the US dollar and the US economy now if there's a systemic failure of the US economy in the future 
I mean, of the U.S. doll um, banking system in the future, yeah, it's not going to freaking last forever. It'll it'll get going again. It'll it'll be, it'll be it'll um, banks will open up again. But the problem is that's also going to cause, uh, and it might take a while to get some of your money. You know, some of the banks are insolvent. There might be some problems of getting the FDIC getting to shore up. You know, whatever problems there are. But the deal is, it's going to cause a total lack of faith in the banking system and the dollar itself, which is going to have a poor negative impact on the sales of new U.S. treasuries and the ability of the government to fund uh, its debt and meet its obligations in the future. So that's just how it works, man. So right now, you know, everybody in Washington, it's kind of like super confident that everything's going to keep going like old girl here with the with the big hooters and uh, the short skirt and the poodle walking down the street like nothing can happen. But it's like she's getting ready to walk into an open manhole cover because she ain't looking where she's going. And you know what? That's exactly what's going on in Washington, D.C. You got people like Nancy Pelosi and, you know, Barbara Boxer and uh, Dianne Feinstein. These are naive people. You know, they're not hipsters like these people from Harlem that really know how to dress back in the late 60s or early 70s. You know, they're not with it. <laughs> That's exactly what the problem is. They're not all there, and they have absolutely no clue what's coming up. Oh, uh, you know, I should sense it, say this in this video, too. There's a modus operandi behind why they're bringing in the Islamic refugees and stuff. You know, some people are like saying, oh, these liberals are doing this. I don't know why they're doing You know what they're doing? They're going to try to freaking create so many problems in this country and other countries that it will require an international police or military force to come in to straighten things out. That's what, they, that's what they're thinking. But actually, I know what's going to happen. You're, you're, you're actually the elite are bringing in the seeds of their own destruction. They are. It's stupid. <laughs> because you, can you figure... I mean, even though... Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, and Barbara Boxer just cogs in a wheel and Chuck Schumer. Let me put it this way. Um, even the people that control them, they ain't that smart. They live up in ivory towers. They're not that smart. They really, they're missing something. They're missing some other angle. They're painting themselves in a corner. And they don't, they don't quite get it, you know. Now, these people walking down the street in Harlem that are hipsters, they probably would get it. But, you know, they're not running the show. <laughs> hey, this was back in the early 70s when people were really styling, man. People today, they don't, they don't dress like this today. They dress too plain. You know, look at them froze, man. They're pretty hot. Look at them legs, man, on chicks, right? Anyway, but, you know, people are not um, they're looking at what's going on. And, you know, the deal is, you know, people are focused in on these freaking stupid stories maybe with, you know, Bill Clinton and the White House interns, and this was probably an intern from way back in Washington, D.C., from a bygone era. But the deal is that, you know, nobody really um, is focusing in on the reality situation where we're heading to. And I hate to say it, but, you know, even though I know Vlad Putin is not a Mr. Nice Guy Santa Claus, and he kills people, and he gets rid of people, and <laughs> shit like that, it gets in his way. Um, I mean, so does Hillary, too, you know. And I respect Vlad way more than Hillary. i got to tell you one thing. Um, even though I also know that Vlad is not necessarily riding a white horse against the Western New World, world white New World Order, and he wants to just, you know, fix everything, he really wants to establish the greater Russia as a main dominant global power. Um, but you know what? I think Vlad has got enough know-how and he's going to got enough staying power that he's going to be the instrument that's going to freaking clobber this nation. And they're not expecting it. There's no doubt, there's no doubt in my mind about this because where I'm really getting this from is the message of Fatima. If mankind does not keep sinning against the Lord, nations are going to disappear. And I'm going to tell you, this nation is going to be one of them. No doubt about it. And uh, old Broad is going to be better. She better get the hell out of freaking D.C. <laughs> take her typewriter and cigarette with her because that's ground zero. Um, so anyway, you know, if you think back, though, even in the 60s, 
even though there was a lot of problems in the 60s, this is a Woodstock chick, you know. Um, I'm going to tell you that a lot of ways they're sort of right. Um, you know, we've lost the, our way in the material world too much. We're not in touch with ourselves. I mean, that's kind of huggy feely shit and stuff like that. I mean, you got to work, you got to strive, you got to think, you got to act and do things. But at the same time, you know, everything that we do is not all just how much crap we get. And, you know, we've become too much of a materialistic society. Like, America probably throws away more crap than, um, you know, 10 other countries freaking actually, you know, try to buy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're kind of like, uh, we got a pretty big, uh, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't want to say it this way, but it's like a carbon footprint, maybe you want, that's not really the right way I really was thinking of, but, you know, Americans kind of waste a lot. It's like buy, buy, buy. We got to buy something new all the time. And, you know, when you think in the back, in the Woodstock in the 60s, you know, even though there's a lot of garbage back then that I disagreed with, there were some elements to that time that made some sense because people were thinking about, you know, togetherness, the community, and all that. I'd like to get together with this blonde here for sure, uh, with the nice perky boobs. But the deal is you want to make sure that you don't get so much focused in on money, 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 money. I got to have this, I got to have that, because it's almost like a drug. You're on a freaking treadmill. You got to keep going, going, going. The more shit you have, the more shit you got to maintain, the tougher it is to um, keep track of everything you got, you know, that kind of garbage. So, in a way, you know, some of the elements from way back when makes a lot of sense. So, if we have a readjustment in our economy, it's not the end of the world. I know what the doom and gloomer is going to paint the picture like, Ugh. well, you know what? No matter how bad it is, if you're smart, it ain't going to be no worse than living in the turn of 100 years ago, you know? It ain't gonna be even be that bad, as long as you work and you're smart. Because the deal is, we have too much right now that we could do ahead of the game to prepare ourselves for whatever problems that are coming up. Now, you know, personally, I mean, I see some advantage to being in North Central Florida because it's warm and you don't have to worry about freezing your ass off in the winter, but. It's gotten too crowded, and I'm not sure if there's a real financial crunch what would happen in this part of the state. If it was like it was 20-something years ago, yeah, I think it would be fine. I would stay down here. I'm not worried about the Russian tidal wave bomb, you know. Not take us like 100. If they had, even if they use it, it's South Florida's going to get it, not, up, not in the hill country. But um, I'm thinking about going up in the blue, well, we'll see. I should be closing. I might be closing in on this property here pretty soon, within a week, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Tennessee. So, if that happens. Uh, that'll be my next target for getting up there in the next couple of years, or maybe I'll have a two bases. But um, just want to let you know that. Do not. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you. Don't really listen to all these freaking yo-yos out there, freaking playing fear monger. They really are clickbaiters. That's all they are. Um, they're not really telling you anything constructive. Now, sometimes I get on videos where it's how-to, and sometimes I get on videos. I know a lot of these videos I've been putting out lately into getting no hits because probably because they put stuff on the Confederacy and they, freaking YouTube hates and Google hates that shit, you know, but I don't really give a damn. But um, I want to say that people are not thinking about, you know, surviving a problem an economic problem. Um, and it's not being in a negative way. Because, like, you know, if people just went back 50 years ago, people would be going, like, oh, how the hell could these people live without a cell phone and, and having their DVD player here, or on demand television, on demand sports, and, uh, and you know, air conditioning that was on, you know, 50, 50 years ago. You know, a lot of people didn't even have air conditioning, right? Well, they, they had it, but a lot of people didn't have it. What was that 50 years ago? That was 65. Well, I guess people had. I know I had, we had it in 65, but 55, a lot of people didn't have it then. So, 
but people were fine. They were doing fine, you know? They were doing fine. So, you know, maybe there might be some readjustments, you know? Big deal. Big deal. It's not going to be the end of the world, though. Uh, but where I think things are going to get really crazy, though, is if they... they well, we'll see what happens. I know Trump's been... Tra- has ordered the stoppage of all these radical Muslims from coming over, and these couple of these judges said they, they're bringing them over anyway. And I think they're bringing them over anyway behind the scenes in the military, you know, unbeknown to what's going on with the Trumpster. And what they're really trying to do there is foster a climate of extreme tension and violence, domestic violence. So that would bring would bring about a international peace force in this country in this country now under those type types of circumstances one of your best investments is a gun there's no doubt about it and having enough food on hand and <laughs> i know you know i i know if you, you also got to do is say the word islam or isis on youtube they automatically say your video is not uh advertiser friendly on google google tube I think YouTube was better before Google took it over because Google, Google is Google government. But I'm telling you the truth. I th- I already know that the modus operandi is why they're bringing in these radical Muslims because they're doing it to destabilize this country. So we demand or they have to or they will vote for an international police force to come in there. You've already seen them doing that shit when they, they had some of the police shootings and stuff. They said, oh, yeah, we got to have... International police force, whatever, Soros and all this kind of crap. And also it was, um, who the hell is that dipshit's name? The one that was working with Nixon and did detente, uh, did, uh, got trade going with China again. Um, you know, he basically said that, you know, people today would abhor seeing a international peacekeeping force in the United States. Tomorrow they may... That was Kissinger, Henry Kissinger. They may welcome it. They will welcome it. So you, it's quite obvious. I mean, I don't have to think hard to freaking see what they're trying to do. They're not trying to freaking... They're not being huggy-feely with the Muslims and craft. What they're trying to do is... They're trying to bring in so many radical elements as possible so they can destabilize things so we demand a peacekeeping force. Well, that ain't going to work because... <laughs> I ain't going to say no more... <laughs> it's like the joke said, you know, we didn't play cowboys and Muslims yet, you know. There ain't gonna be too many of them left. But anyway, Donald, I don't know how it's gonna work out with him, man. I know he's a smart guy. Um Really ought to just take not just fire James Comey, ought to just take him out back and have him shot. Really. <laughs> I'm serious, man. <laughs> the fuck that asshole. What a traitor, you know? <laughs> I mean, really. Um, that's really what needs to be done because it's going to either be, it's 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 like this, kill or be killed. It's really what it's coming down to. And Trump's in the crosshairs on these jackasses. He is. He's in the crosshairs of these jackasses. And, you know, something happens with him. I'm not going to give a shit, tell you the truth. You know, against, I mean, not to give a shit about him, but I'm not going to give a shit about anything. I already don't trust the government. You know? Now, if a cop or law enforcement wants to freaking wear a Confederate flag patch on their uniform, <laughs> which is illegal, then I'm going to say, well, you're one of the good guys, man. But I, I can't I can't trust any of them, man. Because, you know, what it comes down to, they really just obey orders. That's really what it is. They, you can't trust them. And where I think um, things are going, no. Well, I think we got a few years left way away, but uh, we're going into World War III, man. I'm serious. That's another reason I'm not sure about Florida. It's too flat. <laughs> One bomb, the freaking whole state will be gone. Um, unless you're underground or some shit. And, you know, that's, that's you know, the hills is one of the best areas, I assume. But I don't think it's going to be that pretty. But I don't think that's coming up for a few years. So in the me- meantime, what I think is coming up is that we're going to see um, um, the one way they're going to get out of debt is to de- 
value to dollar, which means there's going to be a lot more rampant inflation. So, you know, one thing I'm going to advise you right now, like there's going to be a major change in the exchange rate between the U.S. dollar and, and the Chinese money, the Chinese yuan. And a lot of these Chinese products that are very cheap right now, they're not going to be so cheap. You might want to buy some hard, durable goods that are fairly decent quality, that are very good value, that are made in China right now, even though I'm not really for made, buying stuff made in China. But, you know, if you get your Harbor Freight tools or whatever the hell it is, and and they got a sale on them, go do it. I mean, I don't even have any Harbor Freight tools. I got like SK and Armstrong and Craftsman. But, you know, I'm just giving you an example. You don't want to put all your money into silver. But silver is going to do very, very, very well. But the problem is when it does very, very, very well, gas prices and fuel prices are going to be extremely high when silver is doing its best. Because pretty much every time silver went through the roof was when there was major, major problems in the Middle East. And I can see Trump's policies are... <laughs> it's, He's kind of like in there with the neocons and neo-hawks, you know. So, and, you know, another deal is the deal with Iran, with the uh, nuclear nuclear treaty and all this kind of crap, that might be a setup. That might be a setup. It might be that um, they design this as an excuse since when they violate something, they can go in there and blow them up, you know. But first, they got to knock out Syria. That's why we're in Syria, because Syria can be a big problem to Israel, you know, from that flank. It's kind of like Syria is too close to Israel, and they could be lobbing into missiles to Israel, so they want to they wanna knock out Israel before they go to, I mean, knock out Syria before they go to Iran, because Syria could be a big problem to Israel. So, you know, it doesn't look like this shit's going to happen real, real quick, but I think what's going to happen probably this year in 2017 is a major readjustment in the equities markets and the major media is going to be tearing up Trump on that big time so you know but these chicks don't care because they don't have any money you know they don't have any money in the stock market they only give a shit about their dresses shoes and their hair and shit and walking down the street and grabbing a lot of attention so anyway um just want to give it to you straight here because the deal is you know people are not not thinking about the future. I hate to say this, but, you know, because I'm picking on one group, especially the millennials. They don't think about this shit for nothing, man. You know, very, very few survival skills there. Not all of them, but generally speaking. Generally speaking. Not to say that all of them are like that, but generally speaking. So... You know, you got to know how to survive and thrive no matter where the hell you are. And if you don't know how to do that, you're going to be screwed big time. So, um, but you know, that's, that's, the answer is not just only some shiny coins. It's part of the answer. Everybody else is saying that's the only answer that has a silver channel, right? Do I say that's the only answer? No, no. And actually, I think the metal that's going to do the best overall is palladium, but I think it's going to take a major hit this year if, if if the markets come down like I thought. And I'm going to put a video out later on, provided I get this check really soon, because um, I'm going to recommend a bullion dealer. I'm going to do a blatant plug on them, not that they know it is. But their integrity just totally blew me away. I, I screwed something up real late at night when I was mailing in the metals. I'm going to tell you about it later, as soon as I get my check, uh, for the difference that I screwed up. They they caught it later on, and um, I got no ties to them, but I'll tell you, you know, I'll tell you who they are. It's GainesvilleCoins.com, but I'll tell you um, details of that later on in another video, and their, their integrity just blew me away, but I want to make sure I get the check first. Then I'll do the special video on what the details of the story are. And then I'll tell you all the details on that. And they got a good setup on their site and everything. But I'm going to tell you that um, integrity is number one. Integrity. So 
I think they're, I, I should be getting this check, but I want to make sure I actually have it in my hands. <laughs> then I'll do the video, and I'll give you all the details of what I screwed up on, because I did this shit, I think, it might have been 4 o'clock in the morning or some shit, after I was working all day at the CPA firm, and I was very, very tired. I did, I made a boo-boo that <laughs> cost, that could have cost me some money, <laughs> and uh, they caught it later on, and they told me about it, and they're sending me a check. I don't think all your bullion dealers would do that shit. So, you know, right now, I'll, I'll kind of keep mum on that exactly, but give you the details later, and, uh, you know, I'm assuming, I, I, don't, I think I will get this check, but when I get it, you're going to see why these people got super great integrity. So that'll be a little bit later on down the line. So anyway... Um, just take care and, uh, you know, chill out. Don't worry about shit too much because if the fear mongers are telling us the earth's caving in and shit, well, you know, you know, remember, remember the people at Woodstock, right? <laughs> Everybody was just living out on a, having a festival. It's all in your head, you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes you can just live off the berries and live off the land and, Make yourself a grass thatch hut and, you know, don't think about all the other shit you left behind, right? So anyway, over and out.